first, we need to know the objective of the lesson. By the end of the lesson, the learner should be able to identify solids that dissolve and those that do not dissolve. We need to know what matter is. Matter is anything that occupies space and has weight or mass. So anything that occupies space and has weight or mass. Now the three states of matter, because we need to know the three states of matter. We have matter in form of solid here. So this is matter in form of solid. We had said that matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. So there are these things that have occupied space in this container. Okay, this is matter in form of solid. Now, if I sit here on this chair, it means that I have occupied space here. So there is no space here. If you want to come and sit here on this chair, you cannot be able to sit because I have already occupied space there. Okay, we also have matter in form of liquid. We also have matter in form of liquid. Liquids flow. Liquid is matter that flows. Matter that flows, we call that liquid. So we have liquid that is water in this container. So it has occupied space in this container. Then we have uh, matter in form of gas. For instance, in this room, we have a lot of air in this room, but you cannot be able to see it because air is invisible. This glass has got air in it. But you cannot be able to see the air in the glass. For instance, if I put this glass in this water. I want to immerse this glass in this water. Okay, there is a paper in this glass. If I remove this paper here, it's dry. Why is it dry and yet I must there? glass in water it is because the water did not enter this glass why because the glass has air in it in most questions you get questions like this one here normally we get questions like this you normally get questions like this one here then we stick a paper here we must now the question could be like this the standard five children of this commercial primary school took a glass and they must in water. Now, they found that water did not enter their glass. Why? It is because air has already occupied space in their glass. And that is why water did not enter the glass, because the air has occupied space. Now, if you want now water to enter this glass, because that's another question which can be asked, what should you do? Now, this one here, you should make a small hole here. If I make a small hole here, then it means the air will escape and then the water will enter the glass. We come to characteristics of matter. We come to characteristics of matter. Now, we talked about solids. We talked about solids. So, solids have a definite shape. They have a definite shape, they have a definite volume, and they have a definite mass. Now, this is the formula for doing characteristics of matter. That is, sha, vo, ma, and so, li, ga. Sha means shape, vo means volume, and ma means mass. So, when you take so, solids, they have a definite shape, they have a definite volume and they have a definite mass. Liquids. Li 
stands for liquids. Liquids do not have a definite shape. So what happens is that the liquids will take the shape of the container. So they don't have a definite shape. They will take the shape of the container. So if a container looks like this, then the liquids will take that shape. So they do not have a definite shape. But liquids have a definite volume and they have a definite mass. We come to gases. Gases do not have a definite shape. They do not have a definite volume, but they have a definite mass. They have a definite mass. For instance, if you take a balloon with some air in it, and maybe you put it on a weight machine like this one here, you suspend it. Then if you remove one balloon, you deflate it. These balloons are inflated. But if you decide to deflate one, what is going to happen is that you're going to see this. The one that is deflated will hang like that. So let's come to our today's business. That we want to look at solids that dissolve and those that do not dissolve. So we are going to start with those that are dissolving solids in water. So here we have some salt. I want to put some water here. You see what is going to happen. So you can see the salt has dissolved in water. The salt has dissolved in water. So when you take salt, when you take salt plus water, what you get is a solution. So here we have salt solution. So our salt is a solute, water is a solvent, and what you get is a solution. So this is salt solution because the salt has disappeared. It has dissolved in water. So which means salt is a soluble solid. Uh, it's a soluble solid because it has dissolved in water. Now we can also use another solid. Maybe we use sugar. Maybe we use sugar. And you can see me shaking. Do you know why I'm shaking? You don't know why I'm shaking. It is to make the solid dissolve faster. And that is why I'm shaking. Now, I can also stir, maybe use a spoon or a stick to stir to make the solid dissolve in water or dissolve faster. Or I can use water that is hot to make the the solid dissolve faster. So I do shake to make it dissolve faster. So what I have is sugar solution. So the sugar here is a solute. Water is a solvent. What is formed here, the sugar solution, is a solution. So we want to look at solid so we are going to use flour, we are going to use flour, flour is a solid, so we add some water and we shake, we shake. I'm even using a lot of energy to shake. Okay. Class, what can you see? Has flour dissolved in water? No. So, flour is not soluble because it has not dissolved in water. 
So what I want you to do now, I want you to go and look for other solids at home. You look for other solids at home and you try the same experiment. So you will draw a table like this one here. Then you draw, you make a column like this. This side you can say solids that dissolve. Solids that dissolve, you write here. Here, the solids that do not dissolve. So you try many. For example, today we have tried with the salt. So we write our salt here. We have tried with the sugar. We write our sugar here. Because these two dissolved to form a solution. And we also used flour. So flour did not dissolve. So you write in that column. So next time we shall look at liquids. That is liquids that mix and liquids that do not mix. That is miscible and immiscible liquids. Goodbye.